that. We've got a great partnership. And um, uh, again, your, your leadership uh, and your assistance on that airport file was crucial. And another one that's uh, very passionate to me, we had about uh, 30 people sleeping on the street last night. There's no place for them to go. And we have a program that we're working on microhome projects and uh, housing first projects for the city. And over the next three or four years, the public and the, uh, the governments will work together to put out about uh, 40 microhomes and, and uh, find homes for people because uh, nobody deserves to sleep on the street in our city. And uh, we'll, we'll solve that one. I'd now like to inv uh, invite Joanne Glant, CEO of the Fredericton International Airport Authority and the platinum sponsor for this event to come to the stage and say a few words and introduce Mr. DeCourcy. Joanne. Thanks to the restoration of LH, Availability of Old Age Security and Guaranteed Income Supplement, which is called GIS, back to 65, senior and those in, um, entering in retirement are living with greater dignity. An average of $13,000 is back in the pockets of those who need it most. Proud that Base Gage Town is one of the largest military based here in this riding, and we're also thankful as an airport because they bring a lot of business. Matt is pleased that Canada's new defense policy, Strong, Secure, Engage, will increase annual cash defense spending by more than 70% over the next 10 years. This increase ensures the base will play an even more significant role defending our country bringing more than 700 million annually to the province economy. Matt is also pleased that because of the government's substantive and strategic investment, life is more comfortable, fair, and prosperous for Canadian families. Enhancement to the Canada Child's Benefit, the CCB, are helping more than 15,000 children in the Fredericton riding alone. Meanwhile, the CCB continues to pump more than $622 million into our region economy. Since his election in October, as the youngest ever of the Parliament for Fredericton, Matt's various role as MP has given him a more in-depth understanding not only of the need of his writing, his province and Atlantic region as a whole, but also as Canada's role in the world. In his former position as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Matt came to further understand the value of diplomacy and cooperation. In his new role as Parliamentary Secretary to Immigration and Refugee and Citizen, he's looking forward to using these skills to find ways of increasing immigration and the economic potential that it brings to Atlantic Canada. He believes as the diversity of newcomers enriches not only the cultural fabric of our country, but also its economy and the lives of every Canadian. Without further ado, please welcome Member of Parliament, Matt DeCourcy. So thank you all uh, so much for your continued collaboration. I was listening to Joanne thinking about uh, the things that have happened over the last number of years, and I was mentioning to Ryan uh, Morgan in the table here that it was four years ago today that I received the nomination uh, from the Liberal Party to, uh, to present myself uh, as the candidate in the last election, uh, and I have every intention uh, of uh, presenting myself again in 2019, and it's because I have the opportunity to work with people in this room on a daily basis, so thank you for that. Uh, for me and from my team at my constituency office and office in Ottawa, we love working with the folks who are here in this room. And this room looks great, Dan. Congratulations. <laughs> Krista, to you and your team at the Chamber, uh, thank you for your ongoing uh, dialogue with our office. Uh, we love the exchanges that we have with you. Uh, they're never banal. They're never boring. Uh, and, and quite frankly, uh, there's, I think, uh, some relevance to the idea that uh, it's not always right to tell me what's right, but sometimes to tell me what's wrong. Uh, and uh, you never fail to do so. <laughs> In a way that is helpful, and I certainly appreciate it. <laughs> and Ryan, thank you as well to you and your entire board, to your committee members, and to the entire uh, membership of the chamber. Um, the reason that this place looks so great, this community is, is uh, in no small part due to the membership of the chamber. Um, to the entire 
group of sponsors. Uh, thank you for continuing to make this parliamentary breakfast something that I look forward to each and every day. Uh, I know the Chamber thanks you for showing up uh, with money uh, on the table to help make this work, uh, so we all appreciate that. And before I begin, uh, I want to acknowledge that we're here on unceded traditional territory of the Wollastuck Way. Um, and to start, let me just say, how great does our community look? We have development activity in Fredericton that has reached over $115 million this fall. That's fueled by significant private sector investment, which turns our city into a city that looks like it's on the move a city that we know is fueled by a strong entrepreneurial spirit. Over the past three years, I've come to appreciate how business, entrepreneurship, and innovative thinking are absolutely vital to our community and to our entire country. To support the, po the social programs that we hold dear, we need a thriving economy. We need successful innovators, entrepreneurs, and small business owners who create jobs, and new opportunities. As your representative in Ottawa, my job is to improve opportunities for you so you can create opportunities for others. As Pierre Trudeau once said, a country, after all, is not something you build as the pharaohs built the pyramids and then leave there standing to defy eternity. A country is something that is built every day out of certain basic shared values. And so, it's in the hands of every Canadian to determine how well and wisely we will build the Canada of the future. For the last three years, through the Atlantic Growth Strategy, building and sharing are exactly what our government has been striving to do. We're building on Atlantic Canada's centuries-old culture of innovation and sharing the goal of creating more middle-class jobs, strengthening local economies, and growing our communities. With a vision that includes reaching out to the world, the Atlantic Growth Strategy is breathing new life into this community. Now on Tuesday, the Atlantic Growth Strategy trade mission to China wrapped up its five-day visit. Made up of 70 businesses and organizations, including Fredericton's own Cory Nutrition and Red Rover Brewery, this mission was a resounding success. Atlantic Canadian businesses signed 11 agreements with their Chinese counterparts, contracts worth over $320 million in economic activity. Trade missions like this show how our Atlantic growth strategy is helping our region reach out to the world to strengthen economic relationships and create jobs. And concerning our most significant trading relationship, after more than a year, and uh, what a year it's been, Canada reached a deal to renegotiate NAFTA. The modernized USMCA maintains tariff-free market access from the original deal and includes updates to address modern-day trade challenges and opportunities. By standardizing and modernizing customs procedures throughout North America, the agreement will make it easier for Canadian businesses to export goods to the US and to Mexico. Our new trade deal with Europe, CETA, will also create jobs, strengthen economic relations, and boost Canada's trade with Europe's five million customers, the second largest market in the world. The CPTPP that Canada signed with 10 other Pacific Rim economies this past March gives us free trade access to another 495 million people with a combined GDP of 13.5 trillion. When it comes into effect next year, Canada will be the only G7 nation with free trade access to the Americas, Europe, and the Asia Pacific region. And as the capital city of the most export dependent province in the country, connecting our small businesses with world markets will help them export their knowledge, create jobs, and ultimately grow our economy. And our government's plan to build a stronger economy also includes a clean environment. Because small and medium-sized enterprises are fundamental to our economy, 
As we put a price on pollution, we will help you lower your energy costs and remain competitive. Our government is providing additional support with things like energy retrofits, efficiency upgrades, and fuel switching. Along with other programs designed to help you stay competitive, small businesses are also benefiting from a reduction of the small business tax, which was lowered to 10% in 2018 and will be cut again to 9% in January. By this time next year, the combined average tax rate for small businesses in Canada will be just 12.2%, the lowest among G7 countries. Now, as I mentioned earlier, with all the new building taking place in this city, we look terrific. And some of the credit for this infrastructure goes to investments made through our Atlantic growth strategy. Our goal of supporting growth by engaging and connecting people through infrastructure means that the Atlantic provinces will see almost $2.5 billion over the next decade for infrastructure projects. This includes our investment in the $30 million expansion to the Fredericton International Airport. Not only is our airport a strategic asset that connects our region with a world of ideas, perspectives, and fresh thinking, it's also one of our biggest economic generators. Our expanded airport will enhance our connection to an increasingly global economy. And Base Gagetown will benefit as well from the airport expansion. Each year, the base, home of Canada's Army, contributes more than $250 million to our local economy and more than $700 million to the provincial economy. And since taking office, our government has invested almost $65 million in the base, including critical infrastructure upgrades, and a new tactical armored patrol vehicle facility. Now, while it's e easy to see infrastructure investments like buildings, sometimes they're not so obvious. Take, for example, our water and wastewater infrastructure. Through Infrastructure Canada's Clean Water and Wastewater Fund, Fredericton has received more than $8.6 million to upgrade its water and wastewater infrastructure since 2015. An efficient transit system is good for business, too. It's also good for our cultural infrastructure and how we build and share our community. Through the Public Transit Infrastructure Fund, the federal government has provided Fredericton with almost $2.5 million. And as our city continues to grow, investments in our public transit system will be life improving for many. We've expanded second stage housing for vulnerable women and children in Fredericton. This money means more vulnerable women and children will have a safe place to live with supports on site that can help them heal and move forward. Added together, Fredericton has seen more than $135 million in infrastructure investments delivered by the federal government since we took office. As one of Canada's preeminent startup communities, our city has earned a well-deserved reputation as an entrepreneurial center and hub of innovation. With UNB playing a central role, we're attracting more innovators and more creative entrepreneurs. Fredericton's innovation ecosystem is thriving. Our investment in the Canadian Institute for Cybersecurity is an important reason why Canada's cybersecurity research is looking to center in Fredericton. We've also supported Energy Adventures Accelerator Program, which is helping entrepreneurs in smart grid, clean tech, and cybersecurity sectors. Our investments include $16.6 million in the brand new Center for Healthy Living on the UMB campus. This center focuses on research into chronic disease prevention, exercise, and healthy lifestyles, and will help us find the innovative solutions we need in face of an aging population. The center's connection with UMB's Department of Kinesiology and the McCain uh, Human Performance Lab provide us with a nationally significant and innovative health research cluster. The cluster also includes the innovative work underway at the York Care Center, home to AgeWell, Canada's technology and aging network. 
It recently partnered with the New Brunswick Health Research Foundation to open a national innovation hub in Fredericton. AgeWell is federally funded and is a center of excellence designed to accelerate innovation in the field of technology and aging for the benefit of all Canadians. Our government's $75 million investment in a healthy seniors project, along with important local research projects already underway, reflects our belief in this region's critical mass of research and innovative thinking. Now, investments in our research capacity effectively segue into what I'd like to spend the rest of my time discussing. In my view, one of the most significant challenges that the business community will face in this city and across the province in the coming years is a shortage of skilled workers. Attracting and retaining a skilled workforce and increased immigration are essential to creating high quality, full-time, middle-class jobs across the province and right here in our city. Here's some facts about the positive influence of the Atlantic Growth Strategy. Its early success means more newcomer entrepreneurs are likely headed our way. Between July 2017 and April of this year, Atlantic Canada's economy grew by more than 16,000 jobs. Employment grew by 1.5%, which was better than the national average. Almost 11,000 jobs were created in service sectors and more than 5,000 in construction and other goods producing fields. The jobs created in Atlantic Canada during this period were full-time jobs, which grew by 2.4% compared to 1.7% nationally. However, a recent report from the Conference Board of Canada says that without immigration, our country's ability to grow our economy would be an impossibility. Without immigration, Canada's potential economic growth annually would slow from 1.9% to 1.3%. Now that may not sound like a lot, but that is an average difference of $1.3 billion each year to Canada's economy. That's an average of $98,000 per household or $36,000 per Canadian. So it's clear. Immigration is a driver of economic growth for Canada and of wealth for Canadians. In my role as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, I commit to everyone in this room to continue working with you to do everything we can to drive immigration to this city. And I'm pleased to see already positive results with our Atlantic immigration pilot. The pilot was designed in collaboration with employers to help them fill their labor needs and ultimately grow our economy. It exists because we know newcomers play a critical role in economic development. They add skilled talent to our workforce, they encourage entrepreneurship and immigration, increase human potential, and they strengthen the cultural infrastructure of our communities. And with the Local Immigrant Partnership Program of Fredericton led by Ignite Fredericton, we have a community-driven approach to improve integration and increase retention and settlement, all necessary elements for success. Through the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, we will admit an additional 7,000 economic immigrants by the year 2020, and that's over and above growing numbers of provincial nominees and those who come here through express entry. With dedicated supports now offered by the pilot, businesses have made nearly 1,800 job offers since 2017. And New Brunswick is leading our entire region in Atlantic immigration pilot uptake, with the most number of newcomers settling in Fredericton and Moncton. These newcomers earn an average salary of $60,000 per year, which taken together represents an annual boost to our economy of $21 million. And more economic boosts as a result of the pilot are coming. And these boosts are from business, not from government, as it should be. So thank you all for stepping up to the plate. Now Krista, as you pointed out in your immigration commentary last spring, immigration is absolutely essential to the growth of the New Brunswick economy. 
Last year, we saw the fewest births on record in New Brunswick since 1946, and young people have been leaving our province for decades, more than 17,000 over the last 12 years. Without children to grow into tax-paying New Brunswickers, our province will see reduced prospects for economic growth. And the Chamber's efforts in welcoming and assisting newcomers are absolutely essential, as are the three programs that you host, Succession Connect, the Business Immigrant Mentorship Program, and the Hive. This work brings a unified and collaborative approach to economic development and population growth. For example, Succession Connect addresses two critical needs within our province. First, by supporting population growth, through immigration, investment, and retention, and second, by offering a solution for business owners who find themselves without a succession plan in place at retirement. Our government is pleased to support this initiative through the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency. Our post-secondary institutions are a competitive advantage that we absolutely must leverage. International students are educated, skilled, typically young, that's a winning combination for a province with demographic and labor challenges. After they graduate, let's do everything we can to keep them here. Fredericton can and should be their launch pad to success, and their success will be our success. And we can't overlook the needs of Canadian students. Through recently created student work placement programs, more than 5,000 Canadian Atlantic Canadian students are gaining valuable work experience and work-ready skills in business and entrepreneurial fields. Our government recognizes the challenges that middle-class families will face without workforce development and population growth are evident. Our ambitious multi-year immigration plan recognizes these challenges that middle-class Canadians will face, and that's why we are committed to help grow our economy through this plan, reunite more families, and as we always have, provide refuge for the most vulnerable. Let's continue to work together to make our city, our province, and all of Canada a magnet for newcomers. And as we work together to grow our economy through these wise investments in people and in projects that connect our community, let's hearken back to the age-old culture of innovation that has always served us well. Let's remember that in the late 1960s, experts just down the road at the Potato Research Center here in Fredericton created the potato that helped make McCain Foods the world's biggest French fry producer in the world. That potato was called the Shepherdy. Imagine the number of jobs McCain Foods has created, the number of newcomers McCain's food has welcomed because of the Shepherdy. Not only here in New Brunswick, but around the world. Jobs created as a result of innovative thinking by New Brunswickers. Innovative thinking continues today at the Potato Research Center, which is one of agriculture and agri-food Canada's most important research centers. Some of the industry's most respected scientists, both Canadian-born and those who have come here from abroad, work here doing remarkable things. Now, our government believes strongly that wise investments in people and in community projects that connect us together will continue to drive innovation, create jobs, generate wealth, and ultimately grow our economy. And not to mention, sometimes they lead us to some pretty tasty fries. Thank you all very much.